Let's get a Labor perspective on this now. The Victorian Labor Senator Kimberly Kitching is a senior player in the committee work in Parliament when it comes to defence and foreign relations. She joins me now live from Canberra. Thanks for joining us, uh, Senator. Hi, First Chris. up, uh, how concerned are you about the fact that the port of Newcastle is half-owned by Chinese interests? And if this uh, mm -hmm. foreign relations bill goes through Parliament as is expected to do in this sitting, should the federal government re-examine that deal with the possibility mm. of unpicking it? Well, I think we, you know, have to look at our critical infrastructure and what we need as a country, what we consider critical. And I think the Foreign Relations Bill, which is in the committee stage at the moment in the Senate, um, and I would expect that we will vote on that, you know, shortly or tomorrow. But... I mean, that it is something that's important. We have raised questions both during the hearings for the Foreign Relations Bill um, about the Port of Darwin, for example, as well as, um, obviously, in the committee stage of the bill in the Senate. So, um, you know, these are really, really important issues we have to deal with. But can I also say the Economics Committee um, is also having an inquiry into the foreign investments um, proposals and how that may well be strengthened as well. So I think, you know, we are... The Parliament, certainly the Senate, is aware uh, it, during, in, in its inquiries about you know, how we might strengthen both legislation and also the rules and regulations around foreign investment and our foreign relations, really, Chris, as well. It strikes me that we need to hear more about the Port of Newcastle. We've all talked a lot about the Port of Darwin and how that was a mistake to lease that to China. But the Port of Newcastle, uh, which is so critical to what is at times our number one export industry, either one or two, depending on the cycle, uh, where we export coal, of course, not only to China, but more importantly, larger amounts to Japan and uh, South Korea. And yet that port is, is half-owned by Chinese interests that support the Belt and Road Initiative. Mm. Well, I think Belt and Road Initiative, you know, those agreements will are going to be covered by the Foreign Relations Bill, and I think that, you know, it's important to look at those. I don't think that state and territory governments should be making decisions around having Belt, for example, having Belt and Road Initiative agreements uh, with China. I think that that belongs with the Commonwealth. And, right. and I think I've been pretty clear about that. Yeah, now you've been uh, a strong critic of uh, China, a constructive critic of China and supporter of Australia in, in public debate for a long while. And I want to show a little clip that you draw to, uh, drew to my attention uh, this morning that you've been involved in. And this is Australia's like-minded countries, I suppose, trying to help Australia, Australia yes. when it comes to the wine tariffs. Have a look at this. After a hard day's work, nothing beats a glass of New Zealand Pinot. Two words, Napa Valley. Come on, who need wine when you have aquavit? China has cancelled a whole range of Australian imports in an attempt to bully us into abandoning our values. One of the worst affected industries is the Australian wine industry. This isn't just an attack on Australia, it's an attack on free countries everywhere. So this December we are asking you all to join us in standing against Xi Jinping's authoritarian bullying. By drinking a bottle or two of Australian wine and letting the Chinese Communist Party know that we will not be bullied. Cheers and also say no bullying from China. I kind of lost my train of thought as soon as we got to New Zealand Pinot myself, but uh, <laughs> it's great to get that sort of support publicly. But uh, don't we need yeah. to see more countries, liberal democracies, standing up publicly on the other big issues uh, to, to, to point out China's bullying behaviour and to make it pay a price? Well, I think, Chris, that IPAC, which is the International Interparliamentary Alliance on China, uh, has 19 legislatures involved, so 18 countries and the European Parliament, and it has two co-chairs, typically from across the aisle, and... It's been really interesting to have those discussions. Of course, IPAC also rep represents hundreds of parliamentarians from those legislatures as well. So that ad in support of the, the, wine, the Australian wine industry, you know, their people, you know, other co-chairs fell over themselves to be a part of it because they understand what it's like. I mean, we're not the only country in this situation. Sure. I mean, if you look at Norway, for example, when they awarded the Nobel Peace Prize to the human rights activist Mr Liu in 2010, of course, it's taken most of this decade for their relations to normalise, but they certainly know uh, what it's like to deal with, you know, with China. Um, we are not alone. And today the State Department 
also um, put out a statement about their support for Australia. I think this is really important. I do agree with you that like-minded democracies, liberal democracies, need to stand together. I mean, when you look at the list of those 14 grievances that the Chinese embassy put out, I mean, what are we going to compromise on? We're going yeah. to compromise on the freedom of our press. It, you know, you couldn't report on, you know, human rights abuses or well, there would well, be you know, other um, things you couldn't report on. Your former leader, Kevin Rudd, wants to compromise on the free freedom of, of the press in this country. <laughs> and, uh, and my old boss, Malcolm Turnbull, will come back to that issue later. You mentioned uh, the US uh, State Department. Here's a tweet, uh, part of their message uh, today, and they're saying the communists... Uh, the Communist Party of China's latest attack on Australia is another example of its unchecked use of disinformation and coercive diplomacy. Its hypocrisy is obvious to all. While it doctors images on Twitter to attack other nations, the Chinese Communist Party prevents its own citizens from reading their posts. So that's very good, well, could, strong and not unexpected that's... support from the US. Well, but I want, I, think... so I want to... Sorry, uh, Senator, mm. I, I do want to get to a quote from your own leader, though, Anthony Albanese, today, and his criticism of the Australian government. He says, this government seeks to have pre seems to have presided over a complete breakdown of relationships. The fact that ministers can't pick up the phone to each other, I find that extraordinary. Surely he's not blaming Australia for the appalling behaviour of China. I think that there is, not only is there bipartisanship, Chris, in this parliament, but it goes across the, the crossbench as well. So I was on the treaties committee when we were looking at the extradition treaty that we were going to enter into uh, with China. And I can tell you that in this parliament, there is a firm view not only of the parties of government, but also the crossbench, that, uh, you know, that we, you know, do... We do believe in human rights. We but do I believe I don't in the rights of minorities. I don't doubt you. And you're what... strong on these issues, Kimberly Kitching, but that statement from Anthony Albanese seems to be playing politics with this and blaming Australia for what is appalling behaviour and bullying diplomacy and trade practices from China. Well, I think that what I can say to you is that there is a view in this parliament that we are strong together in terms of standing up for the pillars of, the, of democracy. All right. Thanks so much for joining us again, Senator. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Victorian Labor Senator Kimberly Kitching there. A fascinating issue, this one. She says there's a lot of bipartisanship. That quote from Anthony Albanese tends to suggest otherwise. Let's hope they consolidate there. Australia needs to be speaking as one voice on these issues.